In this video, I want to talk about sin floods and not specifically because I want to teach you how to sin flood something, but I think there's a lot of cool stuff you can learn about TCP just by examining a sin flood attack. Well, even a sin flood attack in slow motion, you can learn some cool stuff. So um, let me demonstrate here. So what I'll do on Mindbenders, I'll create a server. Of course, the classic netcat listener. So I'll set netcat and and I'll set it on port 999 again. Okay, so there's our server. Okay, so what we'll do is also, I think I'll launch Wireshark so we can examine what's going on from um, from Mindbender's perspective. So S S plus S, Mindbender, and launch Wireshark. Okay, so there's Wireshark. Set up, and this is the Wireshark listening on the server, and I'll show you why in a bit. That'll make a lot more sense, but capture port. Okay, there we go. So the, the application I want to use in order to actually send a SIN flood is going to be something known as HPing. And HPing needs root access because what it does is it uses raw sockets. And raw sockets needs root access. So HPing, I'll send a SIN flood in slow motion. Let's see. And SIN at Mindbender port 9999. Okay. Oops. HPing 3. There we go. So this is a sin flood in slow motion. Okay, so let's pull up Wireshark and take a look at what's actually going on. Now there's some interesting stuff happening. Let's cat stop this. We'll stop our terrible, terrible sin flood and take a look at what's happening. So looking at the sin packets here, what we have is in order, we have a sin coming from Mindbender or coming from Destro and um, I must not have Destro in my host file, but this is definitely Destro. This is the SIN packet I was generating from HPing, and it's being sent at Mindbender in slow motion. And this is Mindbender's response. It's actually responding with a SIN ACK. And now, what does Destro do? Destro goes and sends a reset. So what this packet is, is a reset, an RST. That is a sh immediate shut connection down. So resets are sent when a host knows nothing about what it's seeing. So say if you're trying to make a connection to a, um, a mail server but on port 80 and there's no web server listening, the, the mail server is going to be like, what? What is this? And so it's going to immediately set a, a, send a reset. So if a, if, a, if, a, if a device doesn't have any knowledge, if it's not listening on a port, if it's not passive open on any port, it's going to send a reset. And that's exactly what's happening here. So, but, I mean, that doesn't really make sense. It should complete the three-way handshake, right? But th th let's take a look at this SIN packet. Now, Wireshark, I don't know if you can see this in this capture, but it's kind of blue. Let me pull this up. It's tinted a little blue. Wireshark only does this when it senses something's wrong. So, and what we see here is there's definitely something wrong. Now, if, if you remember, there's more stuff in a TCP header typically, and what's missing is the options. So HPing in its default configuration did not set any TCP options. It's just completely blank. So that's, that's definitely weird because you need options in order to function in a modern network. So if this was a legitimate SIN packet, this would have its normal stuff there. But in order to fool Mindbender, the fool, the server, uh, it doesn't it doesn't need actually any options. This meets all of the requirements of the original RFC, RFC 793. This is, it does it, it's good enough to fool Mindbender. There's another, the reason for this blue is, guess what? This is a SIN packet, but it's got an ACK number. And what a, Wireshark shows right here, this is the expert information for this, this behavior. The acknowledgement number field is non-zero while the ACK flag is not set. It's a SIN packet, so the ACK flag is not set, which is always not going to be set on the client's SIN packet. Um, it should never have an ACK number. Uh, this is the one packet that should never have an ACK number. This shouldn't exist because what's happening here is, is, it, HPing is creating fake packets. This is completely false. It's placing 
bits on the wire, but not actually doing any of the behind the scenes stuff in order to establish a TCP connection. So um, Destro here, as I hit enter, it is not creating um, all of the, the, the necessary uh, 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 memory allocation and all that stuff in order to establish a connection. So th so this is not in the sent sent state. It's it's a fake. It's completely fake. And HPing's default behavior is to add an ACK number in every packet, even if it is a SYN packet where it shouldn't be. But when you're attacking a machine, that doesn't really matter. So, but let's explain this, the reset. Now, like I said, this is a fake packet. And so the resets only get set when, when a device it either wants to cut off the connection immediately or knows nothing about it. And Destro, the attacking machine, knows nothing about this connection. It's not in the sin sent state. It knows nothing about this. This is all fake. It's all phony. It's all a fraud. So it's not going to complete the three-way handshake because it's going to receive the sin act from, from Mindbender and go, what the heck is this? Because it's not listening for a response at that point. So that's why we have a reset. Now, this is a terrible sin flood. If you decide to sin, it's not just in slow motion, but each one of these, if, if, if Destro is sending a reset, it's not doing anything to the server. It's doing absolutely nothing. It's completely cutting off the connection on its own. So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll start a brand new capture using the exact same parameters and Let's let's give it some more mustard, shall we? So we'll use the flood. Not floop, flood. Okay. There we go. And <laughs> cut it off. That's probably plenty. Now let's wait for Wireshark. Looks like Wireshark did its thing. And let's see how many packets did it capture? Um a whole hell of a lot. What is that number? 1.2 million? Okay, so 1.2 million and okay. As you can imagine, 1.2 million packets in the four seconds that I let that run or whatever is a lot. So that's a proper sin flood from a single client. Now imagine 30, 40, 50 or hundreds of clients hitting, hitting a box at the same rate. And so, and guess what's happening here is that each one of these is responding with a sin act. But you scroll down, the resets start getting sent. All the resets. And now, also what you're going to notice, oh gosh, I can be scrolling forever. What you'll see, start seeing is these guys right here, TCP port numbers reuse. These are the ephemeral ports cycling. So um, I believe HPing cycles the ephemeral ports sequentially and it's going to, it's going to cycle them and it's going to completely reuse them because I don't know. Let's see if this uses the standard Linux range of ephemeral ports or not. I think it actually starts at like 10 destination port. Yeah. So it goes way deep into it. So there's potentially 60, 63, 64,000 ephemeral ports and put that's it. And if you're sending millions of packets, it's going to start recycling those. And the server, the server is obviously going to know that that's obvious. That's a problem. It's under attack. There, there, there is no question about that. You start seeing these recycling of ephemeral ports all the time. So this is pretty much a garbage attack. Now, this was extremely ineffective. We can increase the potency because raw sockets have this magical ability to spoof the source address because we don't care about the response. Now, Kevin Mitnick in 1994 did care about the response, but he worked his way around it. But we, if we are attacking a machine, we don't care about the response. We actually don't want the, we don't want to use our real address for two reasons. Two, uh, the first reason is anonymity. I mean, if we can fake anything, why not, right? Um, the second would be um, our box our attacking machine won't send those resets. Now, I'll show you what happens when... So, let's spoof. Now, in a lab, um, just a bit of a warning. In a lab, you, you don't want to use a an IP address 
uh, that is uh, currently in use of any kind because it's just going to send a reset because you're going to be basically reflecting your attack onto that box. That box is going to be sending resets. It's not going to do any good. Um, you also don't want to be using just random addresses because if you're going to be using, say, I don't know, Google's 8.8.8 .8 .8, uh, DNS server, you're reflecting your attack against that server. Okay. And now it's not going to do anything, but it's still, I don't think your ISP is really going to like you sending Synax on mass because you're going to be sending your sin. The ref, the sin acts are going to be reflecting off to whatever address that you spoofed. So my suggestion is, is you spoof an unused address, um, on an RFC 1918 address. So I'm just going to use 10.1 because I'm definitely not using that address for anything. So let's spoof away, but let's first make sure we let's, let's uh, stop the capture and let's capture capture and and host 10.0.0.1 because that's our spoofed address okie dokie now this is going to be another slow motion attack i'm not going to flood but this is this is interesting what we have here let's let it soak for a bit okay yeah, I'm not going to stop this capture. I want it to, uh, I want it to kick in for, let it go for a little bit. So I got our stream index. Let's pick stream indexes. Uh, yeah, let's pick stream index zero. Follow TCP stream. There we go. They're still populating. And this is what I thought. Now this is big. What this is, is the server not hearing the final act in the three-way handshake and retransmitting. So this behavior is very different than if you didn't spoof your address. If you didn't spoof your address, your, your box sends that reset, cuts the connection off. This is very different and far more effective. So Mindbender is routing to this 10.0.0.1 address, but that's not going anywhere. It's black holing. It's nothing. It's not getting a response. So Mindbender is retransmitting and going into what's known as the exponential backoff. Now, this is cool. Notice these digits. D this is the delta column and this is the time in between the retransmissions. You'll notice it is a doubling and it will double. And in this case, it looks like, because I haven't stopped the capture, in this case, this, this machine will double up to 16 seconds and then cut the connection off eventually. But it will try. It's set resending. It's Zenac. And it's continuously, tr continuously trying to, to retransmit. Now, this is a, a doubling. Now, this is a... Um, this is based on a, uh, a, a calculation known as RTO or retransmission timeout. I'm going to be going into that in a, uh, in a later video. Um, but just know that this is a far more effective attack and this behavior is doubling until eventual timeout. Um, so all the, so you're tying up those resources when you spoof your address. In this case, 16 seconds. Now, I don't even know if it goes beyond that and it just didn't send the last one but you're tying up those resources at minimum 16 seconds. And that's far more effective than the, you know, the whatever my round trip time, which was t probably, I don't know, half of a millisecond. So if you don't spoof your address, you tie those resources up for half a second. You, you do spoof your address 16 seconds. That's big, okay? Now you can actually, if you say, Oh, I don't probably shouldn't even be telling you guys this. If you were to spoof an internal address that the piece, the, the host that you are attacking knows, you could potentially be reflecting your attack and doubling your damage. Okay, I should, I'll probably just leave you with that. Now, it, back in the 80s and 90s, uh, this kind of sin flood attack. Now, what I did here wasn't a sin flood, but it was a sin flood in slow motion. But back in the 80s and 90s, this kind of attack was far more effective and a single box a single attacking box could effectively mute a server and, and for any duration of time they wanted. And so it, the network stacks weren't as robust and just things weren't as well refined as TCP is now. Um, at this point, 
TCP, at least in Linux, doesn't allocate the full resources um, that a full established connection will use until the, the, the state transitions to established. So the server is only giving a partial bit of resources, and that's to also help um, defend against um, sin flood attacks. Now, they also do things with backlogs and, and a whole bunch of other magic wizardry that goes on behind the scenes to mitigate, mitigate sin flooding attack, but the full resources of this connection are not being utilized. And so, yeah, it's effective, uh, not, not as effective as it was in the 90s when a single box could bring down a server, but when you're but now we have major bandwidth. And so if you get several hundred of these machines attacking full speed and reflecting their sin flood, they, uh, it, it, it does, it does take down some, some, some stuff. So it is still very much an effective attack. So I think that does it for sin floods. Um, some pretty cool stuff. If you want to play around with HPing, do it, just be safe with what address you spoof and definitely try spoofing an address and definitely use an unused internal address and not on your subnet. Cause if you use an unused internal address on your subnet, the server just won't ARP up. <laughs> and so just nothing will happen. So, okay. Anyway, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.